More than six years ago, KKDIC, Turkey's REACH was announced. With one registration deadline for all tonnages, 31st of December 2023. With only a few weeks to go, it's time to benefit from lessons learned by industry in implementing KKDIC so far. Therefore, we have rolled out the red carpet for Serli Unlu from Henkel. Serli, welcome. Thank you, Tiert. Serli, can you share with us some of the early KKDIC implementation preparations within Henkel? Yes, yes, uh, of course. So I think everything uh, started with the, with a good and uh, concise understanding of the regulation and the impact on the business. So first thing we did was that, of course, then interpreting this uh, in, um, further to refine the exact responsibilities by saying this, I mean, for example, uh, according to the regulation, the, the main obligations are with the manufacturers and importers of chemical substances. Uh, and we needed to clarify in uh, which role we are, have, uh, we are uh, within the supply chain. Uh, that is for Henkel, primarily the downstream user, based on the definitions in Kikidik, uh, just like the EU reach, and the formulator. So this was the, one of the first steps. Then uh, we have, of course, uh, started to create our uh, substance inventory that are or may be affected by the regulatory obligations. Uh, after that, we also had uh, pre-registration obligations, uh, which was mentioned in, uh, which is mentioned in the regulation as, uh, as sending a pre-ZF to the authority. Uh, for this purpose, we have first created an inventory, then we further refined the inventory based on, again, the regulatory obligations such as certain exemptions possibly applying uh, or tonnage thresholds. Then we have decided uh, a list of inventory of substances to be pre-registered, where we uh, had a um, different uh, internal threshold than the regulatorily written one, which is one uh, equal to or greater than one tonne. Uh, per year, where we uh, decided to go for 0 0.5 uh, uh, to secure our future marketability, because back then we just didn't know the future business plans. Accordingly, we have pre-registered many hundreds of substances uh, that we are producing or importing in Turkey or importing to Turkey uh, within the uh, given pre-registration timeline. Uh, afterwards, we uh, since I just told that the main uh, responsibility uh, remains with the uh, actual manufacturers and importers, we have uh, contacted our suppliers who are the chemical, actual chemical substance producers uh, to obtain their uh, supplier confirmations of Kikidik compliance. Uh, yet the, this, these type of uh, communications are still ongoing to date. Okay, impressive. Not every company was so well prepared as Henkel, eh? since we do not want to sweep any useful lessons learned under the carpet. Can you mention some bottlenecks industry has encountered in the implementation phase and, importantly, how they can be resolved? Yes, I think I can do that. Uh, from my own perspective, based on observations and also own experiences, uh, as just said, the uh, um, supplier confirmations of Kikita compliance, compliance and obtaining them uh, could be a challenge for us because not every supplier was really able to directly uh, confirm that yes, they are going to be compliant or they are compliant due to multiple factors that they are facing themselves. Um, one example we can give for this is uh, there is a there is a supplier that has no direct business with Turkey, no direct imports. So uh, the import is through the import is happening through a, a, a multi-stage complicated supply chain. Therefore, the initial sub, uh, manufacturer or the uh, first owner of the substance. Uh, is not interested in uh, complying with the regulation. So this was one of the most important challenges and I believe this is the basic reason why suppliers are not able to uh, confer. And how was that resolved then? Uh, it is not yet resolved, so it depends on where this uh, supply, uh, the supplier is standing in this multi-stage and co complicated supply chain. If they uh, have a direct business with Turkey, and I think they are also aware of their obligations, and uh, it's, it's actually advisable that the primary responsibles, because you ask the solution, 
possibly. Um, they are, um, take initiative towards the compliance, not only for their own compliance, but also to uh, maintain a fruitful, uh, productive uh, business relations with the customers. So, uh, I don't think it is yet uh, solved. Uh, but there is progress, so th those that have direct uh, relations with the Turkish markets are more into uh, complying with because they are also understanding their uh, obligations. However, uh, there is still uh, some discussions ongoing. Yeah, no, I think it's good eh, that they try to cooperate. Um, it starts with the lead resistance. Um, uh, many stakeholders mentioned to me that it was difficult to find one of those lead resistance. And they were not really willing to take the role. Do you have any insights why companies are so hesitating in this? I think I do, and let me try to explain. And I also think that this uh, lead registrant identification uh, topic is um, one of the most famous uh, problems with, uh, when it comes to Kikitik implementation. Uh, I do believe the basic reason is um, unclarity with the uh, uh, data and not only for the costs but also to access to this data to obtain the legitimate access to use this data in Turkey um, this is more of a legal topic I would say um, there is no established standard yet in Turkey for for this uh, purpose and I believe um, the relevant partners the companies uh, are um, hesitating because um, Nobody wants to set the uh, uh, first price uh, and decide or, or uh, shape the market price. You know, yeah. everybody is uh, waiting for each other. Yeah, in, in, indeed. As you say, it, it, it's a challenge. It's a big marketplace with with several stakeholders, and uh, uh, the data availability and the access to the data is, is is a huge challenge. Especially the cost sharing and the concern that data shared for KKDK eh, that will find its other way uh, its way to other regions eh, that can cause the fear for blood on the carpet. What kind of data sharing concerns did you encounter? And maybe even more important, what kind of smart solutions have you seen? Uh, we are waiting on hold. Uh, I do believe one of the main reasons is the, uh, the EU data uh, is, is, is uh, owned by EU. Of by course, EU companies, by EU yeah, companies. consortia. Yeah, it, it, just generally speaking, or a consortia, consortia or non-consortia data owners, let's yeah. say. And uh, the uh, paperwork around this, all the data sharing agreements, uh, uh, all type of other agreements around this are designed for the EU that uh, requires a, a, a rework to make it uh, Turkey specific in, in terms of legal texts. This is also causing uh, a delay. Uh, there are uh, certain consortia who are already active, very rare, I would say, based on my own experience. We are also active, Henkel is also uh, actively working in certain consortia where Henkel was uh, the EU lead for the, those substances. So we are uh, again uh, intending to take the lead position in Turkey. Therefore, we are active and we are also uh, seeing the, 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 the progress in this consortia is very slow due to these problems that I just explained. The, the, the texts, the legal texts need to be translated, etc. Not to mention the, the, the cost uh, clarification. Now, I think uh, that indeed the cost, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Turkey is a, is a small market relatively compared to the EU and the value of the data doesn't change, but what are the data owners willing eh, to give as a discount because it's in a, used in a smaller market? I think that's, that's an essential question and people don't know. Yeah. They're debating and it's also sometimes yeah, as good as it gets uh, for, for them. Uh, and the other fear that they have is that uh, uh, the data that are put on the Turkish market uh, might go elsewhere or uh, that new data that is generated in the EU afterwards should also be taken into account then in, uh, uh, on the Turkish market. Yeah. Uh, so that, that is the legal concerns uh, that you address, I think, that are very uh, valid. We need to translate the whole data after obtaining it legitimately. Then we need to interpret this data correctly by the experts to be 
used in the uh, registration dossiers. This is a costly, not only uh, in terms of finances, but also time-wise process. And we know that uh, the number of uh, the experts who, who can translate this data is also not uh, so abundant in, in Turkey. So it's also an important uh, topic, maybe uh, going back to the very first question that how Henkel uh, prepared. Uh, we have started this data and the uh, translation topic well in advance, so we are, more, we are now ready with that. Once we have the legitimate access, we will be able to uh, release, I hope. Hey, those with extensive experience in preparing EU REACH dossiers, eh, they are as snug as a bug in a rug. They are comfortable with the same technical content and the requirements they know. There are some different implementations relating to the SEEF procedures, different IT system, and of course the Turkish language, as you mentioned. However, there is one key difference, the need of a certified assessment expert. Can you tell us more about that requirement? It's a unique uh, KKDIC regulatory requirement, uh, which is uh, outlined by an additional annex uh, within the KKDIC regulation, Annex 18, because as you know, KKDIC regulation implemented the <coughs> or harmonized the EU REACH regulation as it is with all the scientific and technical uh, details, including all the annexes as they are. Uh, but uh, there is this special uh, plus one uh, annex where uh, the requirements and the conditions are uh, outlined. Um, at first, when we were implementing this, this regulation, uh, I was uh, again uh, representing uh, industry and the first impression was that, okay, this is an additional uh, uh, workload, a source of additional uh, cost. Uh, but in time, uh, I uh, had the chance to uh, interpret this, uh, naturalize this uh, better. Um, and now I think and I, I know that the basic reason why uh, there is this additional uh, uh, obligation in Turkey is uh, because uh, the um, uh, required expertise for uh, toxicity, ecotoxicity assessments, uh, risk profiling, hazard assessments that are required by, uh, by a reach like comprehensive regulation uh, is, uh, may not be adequate in the region. And therefore, uh, the, the competent authority, Ministry of Environment, uh, Urbanization and Climate Change, with their full name, um, uh, came up with a very smart uh, solution and uh, left the responsibility with the industry while at the same time defining the uh, conditions and uh, details around these people. So the chemi a chemical assessment expert needs to uh, get uh, a, a, a thorough uh, training, uh, which is minimum uh, 64 hours on all the uh, 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 scientific and technical uh, details and assessment requirements uh, with respect to the REACH regulation, both EU, KKDIC, doesn't matter in this sense. Uh, afterwards, uh, this is uh, this is done in an organization that is uh, approved or accredited, uh, I, I, uh, I want to use the correct word, so uh, decided by the ministry. And uh, there is an exam that uh, measures this uh, competency of these people who get this education. Uh, and is done uh, in another institution, so there is the, the transparency and uh, uh, two the different independent organizations are doing this uh, in, in most cases. Uh, and uh, only after uh, scoring a certain uh, a grade, uh, a, a person can be entitled as a chemical assessment expert. So. I think it's important to tell here that uh, anybody can uh, be a, a, a chemical assessment expert uh, who has the required educational background that is outlined in the annex, such as having a PhD degree in a certain field, uh, such as environmental sciences, or having a, no a number of e years um, experience of doing this type of business. Uh, these are uh, very clearly defined. And I think uh, with this way the Ministry aimed to overcome the, 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 the uh, possible problem of uh, lack of uh, expertise in the region 
And now I am also looking into this from another perspective that I think the requirement of the chemical assessment expert is not only allowing us, the companies, to um, have this self uh, self me um, check mechanism right before um, uh, submitting the data to the authority to ensure that the in the intended uh, uh, content to be submitted is actually correct, adequate, and to the point. Therefore, in the long term, uh, even cost savings, uh, uh, allowing us to save costs. Uh, but also, in addition, while doing this, since we are using the existing EU data uh, from the EU REACH dossiers, uh, we are also having the chance to revisit our uh, existing EU REACH registrations and then see uh, um, uh, what we did with this new uh, light uh, or perspective. And in, 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 in most cases, uh, allowing us to, to reconfirm the adequacy of the work we have done and submitted to the, to the European Chemicals Agency. In rare cases, uh, we also see, we can even see uh, some uh, rooms for possible improvements in an uh, upcoming EU re uh, registration update. Now, I really think that the certified chemical assessment expert will increase the quality of the retouches for KKDIC. And I'm happy to, to hear that that will also then basically increase uh, the EU dossier. So it's a mutual benefit. Uh, yeah. Good to know. Um, final questions, Erli. Okay. In Turkey, they say uh, words fly and the writing remains. So some industry stakeholders are wishing for the magic carpet. Like time, it flies. Is there any chance, and everybody is keen to hear this, for some additional time? Okay. Yeah, in Turkey uh, we, we do say that. Uh, okay, Tier, the answer to this question is I, I don't know. I can't know. Only authority can know this. Uh, but what we know is uh, that um, there have been some, uh, some um, efforts, uh, in collaborative efforts with the ministry and the industry associations or, or the industry via the industry associations or other relevant stakeholders uh, on this topic uh, to um, uh, find a fast consensus. So, but I think it's very important to tell at this point that until we see uh, and um, hear or see an, an official announcement by the ministry with regards to this additional timeline, uh, there is no additional timeline. The deadline is uh, still at the end of this year, 31st of December 2023. There is no postponement, as simple as this. Therefore, it's, it's an advice, maybe a humble advice to not sit back and keep uh, preparing for the compliance and uh, keep going, but of course, I uh, keep an eye and follow the situation closely. I trust both the industry and the ministry are making the maximum efforts uh, from their own perspective, perspectives towards this common goal, yeah, take it compliance. Serli, thank you very much for sharing your valuable lessons learned. I'm sure industry will keep a close watch at the calendar However, preparation and implementation by industry is needed for companies to be ready to take off for KKDIC.